On Black Friday, November 27th, I bought my Fitbit Sense. On November 30th, I had it boxed up in my car and was heading back to Best Buy to return it. What changed my mind? It's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. I would really appreciate it if you like this video, if you'd click the like, and if you'd like to see more videos from this channel, please subscribe. Now let's get on with the misunderstood Fitbit Sense. The Fitbit Sense is the first watch to be released by Fitbit since Google purchased it. The new management team and medical advisors have created this watch, which of course is a watch. It also is an activity tracker, but more important, it's a medical device. There are some very sophisticated sensors in this watch to monitor bodily functions. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, who am I? Well, first of all, I'm a senior, so I'm interested in monitoring my health so that I can stay healthy. I'm also a physician. I've had 30 years of experience looking after folks. I produce a weekly technology show called Tech for Seniors. And my role in that is really to teach seniors about technology. Now, I've produced a number of videos on watches, and in my interest in watches is the health monitoring aspect of the watch. And I've created a number of videos. One of them is called Saving Your Life with Wearable Technology Part 1. I've given this presentation to over 100 computer clubs and organizations across Canada and the United States. And we look at specific medical problems seniors have, how these watchers can help early diagnosis and identification of problems. Now, a lot of the criticism of the Fitbit Sense is because the people doing the reviews are not medical people and they just don't understand how the watch is meant to be. And probably I don't think Google has done a good job in explaining the watch either. So let me try and do this and explain why I kept my Fitbit Sense and why I think the watch is actually a good watch and you should try it. So what were the requirements for my new watch? Well, the first thing I wanted is I wanted it to be able to tell me what my heart rate was. If you watch my video, Saving Your Life with Wearable Technology Part 1, I talk about a heart rate that's too slow, in which you may need a cardiac pacemaker, and I talk about when your heart rate is too fast, and this could be atrial fibrillation, which is a major cause of stroke. So too slow or too fast, I want a watch that's going to continually monitor my heart rate and tell me if it's going too slow or too fast. These are conditions that increase exponentially after the age of 60. That's item number one. Item number two, I wanted the ECG feature. Now you've, again, if you watch my video, I go in and explain all the, um, how, how the ECG feature works. Basically, if you feel dizzy, you feel unwell, you, you will touch the watch in some way and it will do a single lead ECG. So it actually does an ECG and it then stores it as a PDF file on your, on your phone. It's not just the fact that it, it, it does the ECG, but it also interprets the ECG and it says you either have atrial fibrillation or you don't have atrial fibrillation. Now, it's important to understand with this that this is a medical device. In order for a watch to have the ECG atrial fibrillation ability, it has to be FDA approved as a medical device, just as an anesthetic machine would be in a hospital. So these devices have been approved. All three watches have been approved by the FDA. Now, this, the third one, I wanted to uh, be able to look at my oxygen saturation. Now this has been around, this technology has been around for a long time. It's available on a lot of different devices and it is not FDA approved and it's not accurate. We'll talk about that a little bit later.
I want it also to have my temperature taken. Again, temperature is pretty easy to do. The fourth item, and I was holding out because the Samsung Galaxy 3 will be able to take your blood pressure. Now this is sort of cool technology and I plan on doing a video all about this, but in short, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3 will be able to monitor your blood pressure. Pretty cool. And it is being approved by the equivalent of the FDA in South Korea. And it has, and, and that app now is on the watch. It's pending approval by the FDA in the United States, but I expect that probably to be approved this year. So I'm, I think that's something I'm probably going to want, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, I, not a critical issue for me is fall detection. I'd like my watch to, to answer as a phone and also maybe play some music, but we'll talk a little bit about that later on. But the critical ones were the first, the first five that I mentioned there, and we'll talk about how I made my decision. So how does the watch work? Well, the first thing with this watch is that you must wear it 24 seven. Now, for just under 70 years, I've always taken my watch off at bedtime and I've never slept with my watch on. So if you are gonna buy the Fitbit Sense, you have to wear it 24 seven. And the reason for that, and we'll talk about that in a couple of sec minutes, is that is most of the monitoring is done at night in the evening when you're asleep. So you have to wear it at bed. You have to wear it 24 seven. Now, the nice thing about the Fitbit Sense is that it has an excellent battery in it. And what happens is, is that in the morning when I get up, I have breakfast and then I go and have a shower. Now you can wear it in the shower, but I take mine off. When I take it off in the morning, it's got about a 70% charge. What I do is I put it on the quick charge and within the 20 minutes I'm in doing my morning thing, I come out, it's charged to 100%. So in 20 minutes, it'll charge the watch up to 100% and boom, you're good to go till the next day. So you must wear it for the 24 hours. The first thing you'll notice about this watch is the brilliant display. Oh my gosh, it is so bright and so clear. The amyloid watch face that's on there is unbelievable. I was so scared when I got it because it's so beautiful, I don't want it to be scratched. Now it is Gorilla Glass on there, but, but I'm still worried about that. So you'll see in the slide here some clip-on uh, covers that you can buy. These are real cheap. They work great and you just clip them on and you can, uh, it'll, it's a protector for, the, uh, for this beautiful display on the watch. Two things you can do. Um, if you, if you want to keep the brilliant display, then it's an intermittent image on the watch face. So it's not an always on. And I don't mind that. I thought I really would want it to be always on, but it really doesn't matter to me. If I turn my wrist or tap it, it comes on and I can see, uh, see what the time is or whatever information I want. So I just left it like that. If you want a continuous on, then you uh, have to change the display to another clock face and it isn't quite as bright because it doesn't want to use as much power if it's going to be on all the time. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I like the brilliant, beautiful face that's on there and I left it as to factory default settings. All right, let's look at what your Fitbit Sense will actually monitor and measure. On the left-hand side of the slide, you'll see my breathing rate, and this gives the breaths per minute, the average per night. And you'll see uh, in the week that I'm showing you there, that was my uh, average breath per minute per night. On the right-hand side, you'll see my resting heart rate. Again, this is uh, an average of the sleep time that you're, this is measured while you're sleeping, and this is an average of your sleeping time, your resting heart rate. And that is mine on the right-hand side uh, for, for a week. You can either have the data shown as per week or per month. Oxygen saturation and skin temperature are two parameters we measure that I think is much better done on the Fitbit 
because it is measuring an average over the time when you sleep. I think this is much more accurate than single measurements through the day. Let me explain how this works. So if you look to the left, you'll see my oxygen saturation per day as it's measured. It's an average as it's measured through the night. There would be three situations when this could be very valuable, particularly last year. So let's say in California, with the Oli fires and the smoke, if you had COPD, asthma, emphysema, you may find that you started to desaturation before you became symptomatic. And this would be a good way of monitoring yourself because you may need a medication adjustment or you may need to see your physician. Item two is, is let's say that you had COVID-19, really had no symptoms and were self-isolating. If you saw overnight that your SATs were going down, this would be a very, very worrisome situation and would really require medical care. Item three, let's suppose you didn't know you had COVID-19, you were feeling fine, you went to bed and you woke up and your SATs started to drop and you started to feel a little bit unwell. Again, this could be a very, this could be a clue that you have a very serious illness and medical attention would be required. So for these three reasons, I think this is an excellent way to monitor your health. Also, skin temperature. We're going to measure your skin temperature for the period of time while you sleep, not just a single point through the day. We're going to do an average through the night and tell you if your temperature has gone up or gone down. Now, most of the time your temperature stays exactly, your core temperature in your body always stays the same. But it is in, it could be that if you, uh, the early signs of one of those infections I just discussed could be a, a rising of your temperature and that would easily show up with the monitoring Fitbit does through the night. Heart rate variability indicates the health of your heart. I'm going to do a separate video on this and discuss how this works. But the important thing for you to know is that heart rate variability, the higher the number, the healthier your heart is. Now, the other thing that's important to note that heart rate variability depends on your age. And I have put a graph on this slide uh, so that you can sort of compare what your heart rate variability is with your age. So more to come on that. Now Fitbit has a separate app to help you with your sleep. And it of course measures your sleep through the night and will give you a sleep score. And then there are lots of things you can work on with the information it gives you to help get a better sleep. And since most seniors have a lot of trouble sleeping, this is a great watch for seniors to help them improve their sleep. So in summary, you have to remember this is the first watch the new development team has produced since Fitbit was purchased by Google. And I have to believe that there's going to be greatness coming. So if you're a Googler and you're watching this from Google, I've got lots of faith in you, so let's make it happen. Why I think this is going to be a great watch is because of an article I read last week. And this is was out of the uh, tech news and it was Fitbit's new ECG technology that could take wearables to the next level. Now, I've told you in this video that this, heart mo this watch monitors your heart rate. And I've also told you that it can identify atrial fibrillation, but it doesn't continually monitor your heart for arrhythmias. Despite having very good heart monitoring capability, the software hasn't been put on there. Now, in the medical field, we have lots of, it's been around for a very long time, we have the ability to measure your heart rate on an ongoing basis and actually interpret and see if you have any worrisome arrhythmias, anything seriously going on with your heart. This has been around for a long time, and this could easily be applied, since we are continually monitoring your heart, we should be able to identify any serious 
arrhythmias that are occurring on an ongoing basis, a continually monitoring basis. And this article that I read last week indicates that's coming to the Fitbit Sense. So this is going to be a great watch. I have faith in it. It's Ron Brown, Tech for Seniors.